people they say it's a stretch to compare Escobar's ruthless acts with Jamie Dimon's ruthless ruthless acts or Stuart Gulliver's ruthless acts or or Brian Moynihan's ruthless acts or Lloyd Blankfein's ruthless acts but I don't believe it's a stretch at all and here's the reason why you may say okay well these banks are murdering tons of people but Pablo Escobar did. Who cares that Jamie Dimon, they're not spending hundreds of millions of their dollars like Pablo Escobar did personally to, to give back to poor people. So, okay, Escobar did more good deeds than these bankers, but they're, they didn't do as evil deeds as these bankers. And I, and I actually will bring that point into uh, a lot of question. Here's why. Because Pablo Escobar wasn't there pulling the trigger and murdering these people himself. He had his cronies do it. So what these bankers are doing... It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. Stuart Gulliver, okay, laundered $7 billion uh, of drug cartel money. Probably far more, like I said, that was just in two years what they were caught for Mexican drug cartels. Now, if that cartel money could not have been laundered, then the Sinaloa drug cartel would be out of business. Because why make all this drug money, this dirty money, if they can't spend it? It has to be laundered to be spent, right? So, if they can launder it, they can't spend it, and therefore, they're not murdering hundreds of people every year. So indirectly, HSBC is perpetuating these murders because they're helping the drug cartel run. Now, what is the difference between that? You know, you're indirectly, these bankers are indirectly promoting murder by laundering this drug cartel money. And this drug cartel money is enormous, as Antonio uh, Maria uh, Costa of the United Nations Drug and Crime Enforcement Agency or whatever the official name of the agency um, stated. He stated that that probably if the drug cartel money was stopped, so to this day it's still being laundered through all these big banks because he said if it stopped then the global banking system will probably collapse because primarily almost, he said 90% or more of all the cash money in the global banking system is dirty. It's coming from drug cartel uh, business or organized mafia and crime business. So, you know, if you're an employee of a bank, you're getting paid with dirty, dirty money all the time. So, what's the difference of working for a charity, say like a football league? That's a great thing. So, you're a coach at a football league uh, during, you know, Pablo Escobar's heyday. He's funding the football league and you're working with underprivileged Poor you, keeping that out of crime, you're doing something good, but you're getting paid with blood money because it's money that Escobar made from selling coke, destroying lives of kids, from murdering people. It's the same thing. You're getting paid with blood money, whether you're in the banking system or whether you're working for Pablo Escobar and a far better organization doing something charitable. So, you know, the line is very blurry there. And it's a complex situation, granted, but the difference between the two, if you really think about it, if you're intellectual and have the ability to think for yourself rather than just absorbing what someone is telling you to think in school, what someone is telling you to think on TV, the capacity to think for yourself, you will realize that these two situations are not as far apart as you may think them to initially be without actually using your brain to think about them. So in the end, here's what it comes down to, because this is why I said this is probably the most important video I've ever made and posted on YouTube. It's the fact that we have to change the way we think about money. If we work for an institution that is clearly immoral, clearly criminal, like the banking industry, then we must care that the money we're being paid to work for this institution is dirty. We can't say I don't care where the money comes from because the money in my division is not dirty. That is not good enough because you have to understand the whole concept of compartmentalization if you work at a bank and you must understand what goes on at the very top of the bank. So like I said, if you work in a division, because you're compartmentalized, you don't understand the dirty criminal nature of your bank, and every global bank is a dirty criminal enterprise, then it's the same thing as you were if you worked 
for a medical clinic that Pablo Escobar funded, said, I don't care where the money comes from. I don't care that this is money that comes off the death, the misery, the murder of thousands of people because I'm helping people now. It does make a difference. We must start caring where that money comes from. We can't turn a blind eye to it. That's number one. Number two is that we need to stop respecting people just because they're wealthy. We have to understand it is important how they made their wealth. Now you know that people bow down to anyone that has money because that's all people care about these days is money, right? So if you walk into a restaurant that has an hour wait list, if you slip the host a bill or two, a couple hundred dollars, then you get seated right away. You do that every month, you get seated over anyone else. No one cares where that money comes from. They don't care if that money is dirty or if you're a legitimate businessman that made that money through legitimate means. And I think we need to start caring where the money comes from and stop respecting money just for the sake of money. So I think that money needs to be separated into two categories. Those who earn their money legitimately and that are good-hearted people and compassionate people and those that earn their money through a criminal, dirty, immoral business. And those people should not be respected. It should not be deferred to. should not be granted any special privileges. Um, and that's the problem with society today is we don't distinguish between the two. We don't think it's important. And we need to come back to a point if we are to survive as a civilization going forward and not to be overrun by the criminal elements of society. We need to come to this understanding. We need to come to an understanding that the justice system is not about justice, it's about supporting the people that put them in power, which is the bankers. So it's not supporting what is moral, what is right. The justice system is rarely about morality. It is about keeping the status quo, just as all political systems are about maintaining the status quo. And anyone that upsets the status quo will be dealt with, either in the form of bribery. You know, every politician deals with the same, the same policy as Paulo Escobar, which is bribery or death. Plato o plomo. Bribery or money or a bullet. That is the same policy that politicians come up against with the bankers. You either maintain what we want to do in the monetary system, you don't challenge it, or you get debt. So, unfortunately, Muammar Gaddafi saw that. He wanted to make uh, the United States of Africa, and he wanted to basically have the United States of Africa run on a gold currency. When he didn't take the bankers' bribes, what did they do? The UN sent in troops to murder Muammar Gaddafi and steal Libya's gold. Where's Libya's gold gone? I tried to Google this over and over and over again since they killed Gaddafi. Can't find it. I think that's probably because the Western nations took it. Why are we in Mali now? Me, why, we mean the Western nations. Mali is very rich in gold. You know, it's the third biggest, largest gold producer in Africa. You think it's a coincidence, right? You know, anyone that threatens the banking system, it's Plato or Plomo. Take your bribe or death. That's basically it. Saddam Hussein wanted to trade oil in euros, threaten the dollar, threaten the whole criminal banking system again. So what happened to Saddam? He was a dictator forever in Iraq, but he was an okay dictator, and still he threatened the bankers, and it was Plato o Plomo. So there is no difference anywhere in the banking or political or justice system from Pablo Escobar. And if you are a logical person, you should be able to see this with crystal clear vision that this is a scenario that exists today. So that's why I said this is the most, it's the most important point for people to realize of any of the videos I have made because if you can really get to the core and realize that the banking system is no different than working for Pablo Escobar, maybe finally that realization will trigger a mass exodus. And I will make a video because I do understand there's a lot of discomfort from people saying, what am I going to do? I've been in finance and banking my whole life. Even if I make come to this realization and agree with you that this is a rotten, dirty system, the money is all dirty, I'm getting paid with blood money, I'm getting paid with misery money, I don't want to do it anymore, but what choice do I have? You have a choice because you could actually create 
a banking system through peer-to-peer -peer banking. I'll make another video about this and use your knowledge to do something good for society, for people that would help people instead of being part of the system, a worker bee, and a system that is spreading misery, poverty, war, like the war on drugs, I, people say it's not working, it's an abject failure, it's a joke, and it is all those things, but at the same time you can say it's an abject failure, it's really abject, it's not an abject failure, it's a resounding success because the war on drugs is all about money, it was never to stop the drug flow, obviously, because you can see HSBC gets a, a free pass, Wachovia gets a free pass, Citigroup gets a free pass, and all of these banks have always repeatedly been found laundering money for violent drug cartels, for Yakuza, for organized crime, and not a single banker goes to jail. So obviously, the, the war on drugs, the purpose was not to make people's lives better, um, to get rid of a drug addiction and the problems that that brings to families and to relationships and how it destroys families. The war on drugs is basically a perpetual war that so the bankers can continue to make money from it. It's all about money. So in that way, it's been a resounding success. So you have to understand these points. Okay, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from today. If you didn't learn anything, if you disagree with me totally, that's fine. But all I would say is go out there, do your own research while the internet is still free about the points that I've made if you disagree with me. Don't just say, I disagree with you because that's not what I learned in school or that's not what I heard on TV because I already told you, like all news is a joke now. It's all propaganda, almost all mainstream news that is. And education is a joke. So you're not really learning anything. If you're gonna be that closed-minded, not to investigate for yourself fully ideas that may conflict with your own internal belief system, then you aren't very open-minded. So please be open-minded if you disagree to do enough research where you at least can make an educated argument against what I'm saying here. Either way, but don't react emotionally to it. Okay, that's all. Please comment below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.